Greetings! Today on the John Cooper Works, I am installing the short shifter from Forge Motorsport. So here we are then, the Mini F56 Quick Shifter Kit from Forge Motorsport, of course F56, meaning that it can be installed on multiple cars in the F56 range, and of course we are specifically going to be installing it onto my Mini John Cooper Works. So yes, this is what we get in the package. As you can see, we get the short shifter arm itself, we get our little ball end joint with a matching nut, which does have this sort of, it's maybe hard to see, see on camera but it is sort of like cut in such a way that that will lock into place and then we have our allen head bolt with corresponding nylock nut so that will go through there and replace the pin and we have this little awesome innovation which is a pin removal tool so essentially what we will do is we will get that on and then we will just use either a socket or a spanner um, to tighten this bolt up which will push the stock pin out and just make that whole process much easier than having to to use like a punch and a hammer um, so yeah that is really really sweet things to note then about this shifter arm um well I mean, first of all I mean just look at it it is absolutely beautiful it is machined from one single piece of aircraft grade aluminium so it is very very strong but it is so so light it weighs hardly anything and just because it's machined out of one individual piece I mean just take a minute to appreciate just the craftsmanship the, the machining here it's just absolutely a work of art and it looks really cool and um, it may look like it is just you know fresh virgin out of the machine but it's actually clear anodized as well so it will prevent any kind of corrosion which is awesome and you can see here on the arm it has this sort of like slot and this is where our ball end joint goes in and what we can do is this allows us to fine-tune the amount of throw reduction that we get and we can get it up to 40% reduction or less if we choose. Because this locks and because this is a nylock lock nut, we don't even need to use any thread locker, which is very, very handy because it means that, well, A, we don't have to mess around with thread locker and B, we don't need to wait for any thread locker to set. So once we have the install done, we can immediately get out on the road. So that is very, very handy indeed. So you can just tell that everything here has been just designed really, really well. It's been really well thought out. So so at this point let's jump out into the car. All right, inside the Mini then here, you can see this is our gear stick. So you can see that from factory it has this big extension and then we have our shift knob up here. Now this is a really excellent setup. I mentioned it before, just after I got the Mini, that this is like the exact right, like super duper comfortable position for this to be in. Now what this will also do though, because this is a reasonably long extension, it has the effect of lengthening the throw, but also making the shifter experience quite light. So you know, it's very 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 light so that is another thing that our short shifter from forge motorsport should address by making the throw that bit shorter it should make this a little bit heavier which i think will be welcome in terms of making it a more positive feeling gear shift so as far as length goes you know i mean it's not like ridiculous it's I suppose you could probably say it's kind of standard, but of course shortening it will make for some quicker gear shifts and with that increase in positivity, it will just improve the overall shifter experience. So without further ado, let's get the installation started. So first thing we got to do is get under the bonnet. Okay, first thing we got to do then is remove this intake duct. So first thing is two 10 mils. So with those two 10 mil nuts removed, we just need to unclip the duct from the airbox. So we just get a bit of a grip on here, and clip it upwards, and then it should just lift right out. 
Okay, next thing is to remove the MAF sensor. So this little white bit, we just need to ping that towards yourself. So I am going to use just a little trim tool and you can see that it really easily just pops right out. So then with that popped out, we press down on the white bit and it pops out. Okay, next thing is this hose clamp, which requires a seven mil. So you can either use a socket or you can use like a little spanner or you could even use a flathead screwdriver. Okay, next we switch back over to our 10mm to remove this bolt, which is what is essentially holding in the airbox. So the last thing before sort of yanking this out, this pipe right here is like sort of on a rubbery thing that's sort of holding onto the top of the airbox. So we just need to get in there and give that a bit of a yank and ugh, pop it out. Right, now we can get the airbox out. We do need to, of course, remove it from this intake pipe. Like so, and then get a grip and sort of pull it up and out. Okay, so here we can see our stock arm. Um, you can see that it has this sort of big sort of weight I guess this would be and um, so obviously this is what we are removing and this is what we are replacing so before I go any further I'm going to put this into reverse gear which will just give us the best access possible for doing this work okay you can kind of see how it's like sort of moved into a more accessible position so the first thing then that we need to do is we need to pop this cable off so you can either use like a screwdriver or I'm going to use a pry bar so we just want to get under there and sort of pry it off There we go, just move it to the side. Okay, pin removal, that's the last step really uh, before we can get the stock arm out. So essentially the pin just goes right through the center here, so we need to push it out. So that is where our new little tool comes in. So you can see that I've positioned the bolt on the end here into the threads. So what we are going to do is we're gonna place this on here like this and then tighten up the bolt and that will then push the pin out the other end okay as you can see I have our removal tool sort of approximately in place now at this end I have the bolt poking through a little so it's really easy to sort of locate it onto the end of the pin uh, because it just sort of just like slots into place but you can kind of see that this end you know you can move it up and down you move it a little bit left to right and we really want this hole to be lined up with the other end of the pin so what I've got is I have our replacement bolt that we're going to be using very very soon I'm just going to put that in there and then I can feel it you, you sort of see that so currently it's not located pops into the little hole where the pin is so now with that in place I know that we are perfectly aligned and I can start tightening the bolt and once of course it has sort of grabbed on and created a bit of tension I can remove this and we can continue tightening until it pushes the pin out okay as with a lot of things in the car world this requires a 10 mil So hopefully you can see there our pin is poking out the end which is exactly what we want to see of course um, so I think I've got a little bit more to go and then once that is basically loose the pin is out then we just need to remove the bolt from our tool and that will be that oh there we go it's just popped so that is all the way through, so now we just go in reverse, remove our bolt. Might actually, yep, yeah, I can just remove the pin right there. Okay, so now we are ready to get the arm out of here. Now hopefully it will just um, play ball and come off nicely, but it may require a little bit of lubrication. Hey, there we go. Well, 
there we are, that is the stock arm off. Took a little bit of yanking, had to give it a couple of sprays with a WD-40 just to get it loosened a little bit, but with a little bit of perseverance it came right off. Now that we have it off, we can do a little bit of a closer look. You can see that is our pin that we removed with our pin removal tool. Gotta say, that's a great idea, a great design. Just works exactly as you would want it to. Makes the removal of the pin way, way easier than trying to bang it out with a hammer. And then here we have our stock arm. And if we compare that to our new arm, which will sort of sit more sort of like that, it's obviously significantly smaller. This is just like, quite a heavy sort of cast item and it's you know like it's a not even exactly sure but I would say like several times heavier than our new Forge Motorsport piece um, so yeah that's gonna be awesome so now we got to do some preparation on our stock arm which essentially is just getting our ball end into position where we want it so if I lay them side by side like this with the holes lined up, you can see that right at the very end here, if we were to put our ball in there, it would be the, essentially the exact same length as stock. And then we know that all the way in here is 40% reduction. So we can then quite safely say that in the exact middle here is going to be 20%. And if we judge about a quarter, then that'll be 10%. Or indeed, we can go to about 75% of the way along here to get 30% reduction. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go for 30% just from my experience. On my RS I have a similar sort of setup where I can choose a different shortening of the throw length and I went for 30% and I think it is excellent. So I'm going to start off at least with 30% reduction and then of course like we were saying at the start of the video we can very easily adjust it back and forth when this is in place on the car if we want to make some finer adjustments going forward. Okay then, what we want to do is with our nut, this is kind of going to be captive within our arm. So we basically sort of pop this in just where we want it. So essentially, I think that's probably around about right. So we can just give that a little bit of a push and get that in there. So that means that that won't move while we tighten up our ball end from above. So we literally just start tightening that up. And when we're tightening that up, we can, of course, do the first bit by hand, but then we do the rest with a 16 mil. So you can either use a spanner or a socket and get that nicely tightened up into our shift arm. Okay, that's starting to tighten up nicely now. Cool. So as you can see, that was captive, so we didn't need to hold that from below. And yeah, that's very, very convenient. Another nice little design feature. So yes, now we're ready to get our new arm into the car. Alrighty then, now we can get this in place. Now we do have this little extra arm thing, which like slots into the end here. So we kind of have to just go in and then down onto our arm and possibly just hold this with our finger while we sort of locate it. Okay, so give it a bit of a wiggle, wiggly wiggly wiggle. Okay, it's starting to tighten up, so we're gonna need to give that a decent bit of a wiggle and a push until our spindle gets all the way to the top and then we can check for alignment of our holes. Okay, you can see that our spindle is all the way up at the top. I have like a tiny little Allen key that I've been using to test here. And you can see, oh, well, maybe you can see I can get that all the way through. So we are lined up. So now I can go and grab our new nut and bolt to secure our new shift arm in place. Okay, so just a little bit of side to side and a bit of wiggling and eventually the bolt slots right through. So then we just grab our little nylock nut and get that on the end. That's starting to tighten, so now we need to grab some tools. For this part then, we need a 5mm Allen key, so we get that into our little socket head bolt. And then we need a 10mm for the nut. Just get that nice and tight, which it now is, and that is our shift arm on. Okay, and a little bit of clear grease just on our ball end. So now we can grab our shifter cable and pop it back on. 
very nice. So now we can jump into the car and just make sure that we can select gears. Alright then, so at this point all I need to do is get the air box and the air intake duct back into place and of course reconnect our little sensor connection, get connected up to our hose up here. First thing is to line up our two little plastic feet that are kind of hard to see just down in there into the little grommets and then once that is lined up, just give it a bit of a push downwards. And once, we, once you do that, we should be aligned here, we should be aligned here, and we can get everything connected up. There we go, that is the installation complete. Alright, so inside the car, it is very, very noticeable just how short that has made it. And that's not even like, as you saw, it's not even as short as it could possibly go. But yeah, I think that is pretty short and I think that is pretty bang on as to where I want it. And indeed as well, it's made it a little heavier, which is for me even just as important as making it shorter because it just feels so nice and chunky. So yeah. Yeah, I highly recommend it. I'm very happy with it. All I got to do now is go out onto the road and just play with it and see how it is during an actual driving experience. But just sitting here, I am very, very happy with how it feels. So I'm going to go and do that now and I hope to see you in the next one. Please do like, share and subscribe. More content to come very, very soon. Thank you once again. Goodbye.